This is a basic leg rig setup that can be used for standard 3D characters. The geometry that I'm using is a simplified 3D version of this flat 2D style character that I'll be rigging in future videos. To build this leg rig, I'll use a combination of joint hierarchies and floating joints to create a flexible IK leg rig with additional attributes for scaling and shape controls. To start with, I'll go to a profile view to build the leg joints. But to keep things simple, I'll go ahead and hide the pant legs and the socks in a layer, and I'll come back and rig those at the end of the video. To create joints, go under the rigging menu and say skeleton, create joints. Left click to build the joint, continue to click if you want to make a hierarchy. Once you're done, hit enter and it completes the operation. We can create joints like that, but that's a little bit haphazard. So I'll delete that and I'll bring on the grid and I'll remake the skeleton by snapping to the grid. So this will be the base setup for my leg IK. It's actually three joints, even though it looks like two. It considers the last little ball there also a joint. I'll move the joint hierarchy to line up with the leg geometry a little bit better, and I'll use the attribute editor to change the leg lengths and put a bend at the knee. I want to make the length the same for both upper and lower leg joints, otherwise the knee won't bend in the way I expect. And I'll build in a slight bend at the knee with the joint orient, so that the knee bends the right way when we add the IK handle. So I want it to look something like this, but we can make the values really small, so it's just enough for the IK to bend the right direction. To create an IK handle, go to Skeleton, down to IK Handle, select the top of the joint chain, then select the bottom joint, and it creates an IK handle. And when you move it around, the knee bends. So this is our initial IK setup. But here's a bug that's been around in Maya forever. When you first create the IK handle and move it, it seems to work right. But if you pick the top of the joint chain and move it around, the IK handle moves with it, and so it doesn't stay locked in place like you'd expect. But it's not a big deal, because as soon as you key that IK handle, or you put it under a group node or an animation control, then it stays locked in place. Now here's an example to show why I make the leg lengths the same for my IK chains. The chain on the left has the same length for the upper and the lower leg, whereas the other two have a varied knee height. So when we grab the IK handles on the bottom and move them up, you'll see that they each bend, but the one on the left bends in a predictable way where the other two tend to fold in on themselves. Even if I wanted a character to have a higher or a lower knee position, I would rig it with the same leg lengths and then adjust it with additional scale nodes or animation controls. Now I'll make the joints for the feet. I'll make one joint chain going to the right for the toes, and I'll make a separate chain going back towards the heel of the foot. I purposely made that heel joint a little bit higher and away from that toe joint because I didn't want them to be linked together. I want them to be separate joint chains. If you make a joint chain and then go to make another one, but you start it at a point where the other one ends or begins, Maya will automatically connect those two in a hierarchy. So I want them separate, so I built them independently and moved them in place. I built the heel joint going backwards to create a setup for a ball roll control. So when I grab the IK handle and make it a child of the heel joint, and I rotate it, the heel comes off the ground and we get a knee bend, but the foot is still locked to the ground. If I had the geometry and we just take a look at the joints, these joints in the IK setup are the foundation for our leg rig. And if you wanted to stop right here, we could bind the geometry to these joints, and this would work. But I want to build in more flexibility, so I'm going to add additional joints and animation controls to rig this. So I'll unbind the skin, and I'll start setting up the animation controls. I like using NURB circles for these. The square one is also a circle, it's just been modeled to look like a square. I'll duplicate the circle and make a control for the front of the foot and the back of the foot, and then reshape them and freeze transforms. I want both of these controls to have a similar pivot, so I'll move them to the ball of the foot. This will be similar to the joint setup that we had before, but the pivot doesn't have to be the same. It just is in this case. So when you rotate the toe, it moves like this, and the heel rotates like this. I'll use a square shape as the foot control, and I'll move the pivot back to the ankle, and I'll group the circles underneath it. Now I'll group the joints underneath the controls, so when we move around the foot control and the individual circle controls, they affect the joints. And this is our foot hierarchy. Now I'll go and add a body control and group the leg joint hierarchy underneath it so it follows. And then go back to the leg and create the extra joints and shape controls. And to do that, I'm going to use single joint chains instead of joint hierarchies. To make those, I'll go to create joints, left click once, and hit enter. And that'll make a single joint chain. I'll increase its radius, then move it into place and duplicate it up the leg. Now I'll create the shape controls, orient them, duplicate them and snap them to each of those joints. And then parent those joints underneath the shape controls. I'll move these shape nodes off to the side and we can see that these are all the joints for our rig. We'll use the five joints on the left and the two joints on the feet to bind the geometry to. And the joint chain that we use to create the IK setup will only be used as a foundation and we're not gonna bind to it. 
To get the leg shape controls that we just created to follow the rig, we'll make them a child of those leg joints. I'll make the top three controls a child of the upper leg joint, and the bottom two controls a child of the lower leg joint. Now when we move the foot, the shape controls follow the IK rig. At this point, we can bind the geometry to the joints, but it's getting a little bit busy to look at right now with all the geometry and the joints overlapping. So I'm gonna turn off the visibility for the leg IK that we're not gonna to bind to. By selecting a joint and going to the attribute editor, you can change the draw style from bone to none and it'll turn off the visibility of that joint. So I'll repeat that for the lower joint and the end joint, and that cleans it up a bit. And it also makes it easier for me to pick the joints that I wanna to bind to without picking the wrong ones as well. Now I can shift select the geometry and go to skin, bind skin. And because I'm using a bunch of separated joints, I use selected joints as my option and hit apply. And now the geometry is bound to those joints. The skin bind settings worked well enough for this example, so I won't bother with painting any weights, but we can see right away that the vertices at the knee are pinched. That's because the control that's affecting that joint is grouped under the upper leg only and it's not getting any influence by the lower leg. So I'll create a group node above that knee control and use a set driven key to average the rotation between the upper and lower joints. I'll create a group node above that knee control, center its pivot, and rename it. And to create the set driven key, go to the attribute editor and right click over the channel you want to affect. Select the set driven key option box. And now it's filled in the driven because that's what we had selected. But I now have to pick the driver. So I'll pick the lower leg IK joint and click select as driver. And then highlight the rotate Y channel. I'll set the first key at the point where the leg IK and the knee control joint will be at zero. Hit key. And we now see a blue indicator that that channel is being influenced by another attribute. Now move the foot control up to create a bend in the leg. And there's the value change of the lower leg IK. Then rotate the group node of the knee to the position that I want and hit key. Now the group node over the knee control is keeping its orientation in between the upper and the lower leg much better. And we created the set driven key on the group node so that we'd still have the rotations free on our knee control. And now let's add a pull vector constraint to this setup. These IK setups are essential to be able to lock a character's feet to the ground, but there's a certain point at which the IK flips. But if we use a pull vector constraint, we can dictate where that IK will flip and control it better. I like using locators for these, so I'll bring in one of those. And to set up the constraint, I'll select the locator and I'll control select the IK handle and then go to constraint, pull vector, and that sets up a pull vector constraint. And now this locator controls the pull vector of the IK. So at a pose where the leg would flip, you can now move that locator to control the pull vector from flipping the IK. Many rigs are set up so that the animator has to move these pull vector constraints to get a leg twist. But then you're animating the XYZ translation just to twist the leg. And the IK handle already has a twist channel built into it, so I'd rather use that. But instead of animating it on the IK handle, I'll create another channel on the foot control and animate it there. To create another channel on our foot control, go to the attribute editor, attribute, add attribute. This pops up a window where you can name it, set values, and when you hit OK and go back to the channel box, you can see we've added that attribute or channel just below the default channels. And now we can link this new channel to the IK twist channel using the connection editor. I'll make sure my foot is on the left hand input side, scroll down to the twist channel that we just added, select the IK handle, go reload right on the input side, scroll down and select its twist channel and that created a connection. If we look in the channel box, we can see a yellow indicator showing that that IK twist channel is being driven by something else. And now if I go to the foot control, I can use this twist channel to animate the leg twist. Something that's pretty cool about Maya's IK setups is that you can still scale the upper and lower joint lengths. So you could key it directly on the joints themselves, but we could also add attributes to the foot control and connect it just like we did the twist channel. So repeating the same process, pick the foot control, go back to the attribute editor, create an upper and lower leg scale, then back to the connection editor and link the new channels to the X scale on the leg joints. And now we can animate the leg lengths with these channels on the foot control. This leg is pretty much done, so now I can bring back the socks and the pant cuff and rig those. I'll create a single floating joint, move it into place and duplicate it, so I have two for the pant cuff and two for the sock. I'll create an animation control for each of them and move their pivots and then group the joints under the controls. So these are the joints and the controls that we'll use for these. And now we can group these controls to the IK leg joints. So I'll make that a child of this one, and make that a child of this one. Now when you move the foot or the body control, those new controls follow the legs just like those leg shape controls do. 
And now we combine the pant cuff and the sock geo to those new joints. Now the geometry for the pant cuff and the sock follow the leg rig and they can be adjusted with their own controls. Well that's it. Again there are many different ways you can rig a character. It really depends on the character design and the animation style. But these are some of the basic concepts that work for a leg rig.